I wish I could make reaction videos, but I was born in 1956. I've heard all these songs. What could I possibly react to? Hey whippersnappers, Brian here at A Boomer Reacts. Welcome back. If this is your first time here, thanks for checking me out. I listen to rap and hip hop songs using lyric videos, and then I let you know what I thought about them. Uh, today we're doing an artist that has been on my uh, list for a long time. Um, and I know that because uh, the name is so unique, Aesop Rock. And I'm going to be doing the song Daylight. Um, if you're new to my channel, if I have not reacted to an artist before, I'd like to do a little bio just so I know who I'm reacting to. So I'm going to read a little bio uh, and then we'll get into the reaction. Ian Bavitz, a.k.a. Aesop Rock, was born on June 5, 1976 in Syosset, New York, and raised in Northport, Long Island. You know, this whole time that it was on the list, I mean, I know now, but the longest time uh, when I see this, when I see Aesop Rock on my list, I always thought it was a group. It sounds like a group name. It does not sound like a person's name. So when I found out just recently that it was just one person, um, I was surprised. Um, as a as a child, he took piano lessons and learned to play bass in middle school. His older brother got into music and art and eventually got a four-track recorder and keyboard, which Aesop would borrow and start creating. As a child, Aesop and his family would usually make a day of it by going to New York City. This had a great impact on him and the way he viewed hip-hop culture, and he began rapping in the early 90s. He cites Public Enemy, BDP, KM, KMD, and Run DMC as early influences. He likes the initials. Uh, through his brother Chris, Aesop was introduced to groups like the Dead Kennedys, Fugazi, and Ministry. Now Chris sounds hardcore. After graduating from high school, Aesop attended Boston University in Massachusetts, where he studied visual arts. It was there that he met Tony Simon, a.k.a. Blockhead, and they bonded over music. Blockhead remembers, quote, We went to college together for the one year I was there. <laughs> I left and he stayed, and we remained in touch. He'd come to New York during the summers, and we'd link up. He lived with me for a summer, actually, and we just started to make music. I used to rap back then, too, so we'd fuck around. And when Aesop started to take rapping seriously, that was sort of my signal to stop rapping and focus on beats. I was super mediocre. <laughs> Unquote. During those summers when Aesop was in New York, he started to put together an album. Blockhead was involved with a crew in New York called The Overground that included Dub L. Dub L and Plain Pat. Do we know these people? Uh, worked at interns at a Manhattan studio that was not typically used for recording, but it had impressive equipment enough for Aesop to record his first album. It was called Music for Earthworms, and it was released in 97. It was self-distributed, and Aesop was responsible for cutting the album covers and burning the album onto CDs. The album was mostly produced by Dub L., but uh, three songs were produced by Aesop and one song by Blockhead. Regarding his name, Aesop says, quote, I acquired the name Aesop from a movie I had acted in with some friends. I'm guessing that's like a backyard camcorder kind of thing. Uh, it was my character's name and it sort of stuck. The rock part came later from just throwing it in rhymes. In 1999, Aesop released an EP called Appleseed, which was also self-released. Aesop remembers, quote, I did the Appleseed hand style while working at Tepper Galleries in New York. The cover was made at Kinko's. The first Appleseed CDs were CDRs that I duped at home and sold from my backpack at an MF Doom show at Brownies, which was right below my apartment at the time. I continued to sell hand-to-hand -hand in New York while Blockhead started fielding some mail orders from a young internet. People would send us cash or a check, 
and he'd cut the covers out and mail them off. Well, that's commitment. The EP was well received in the New York underground scene. Aesop attracted the attention of Mush Records, and in 2000 he released his second album, Float. It was produced by Aesop and Blockhead, with one song produced by Omega One. Shortly after releasing Float, Aesop signed with LP's label, De Definitive Jux, 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 J U X. I'll let you guys decide. Well, not decide, you know. Um, uh, uh, so he signed with LP's label, where he released Labor Days. The album's release date was one week to the day after the Twin Towers fell. Can you imagine? You know, especially being a New Yorker. <clears throat> Labor Day contained two singles, Coma and Boombox, though Daylight has become the most beloved. Daylight was written by Aesop and Blockhead and produced by Blockhead. All right. Okay, let's uh, see some daylight. I did not admit the wheel, I was the crooked smoke adjacent While the triple sixers lassos keep angels roped in the basement I walk the block with a halo and a stick, poking your patience Y'all catch a 30 second flash visual Dirty cooperative men platoon, bloom head trips, split ridiculous Bad in the splicing of first generation, fuck up with trickle down any hero smack Crackin'. I'm pacing the game with zero hour completion, green slash Duke of early retirement, pick a dream American nightmare hog in the screen I'll the door open so you can stumble in if you'd stop following me round the jungle gym Now it's honor and I spell it with the I stole from heritage, merit crutch, stole the wretched refuse of my teeming resonance, I promise. Tempest towards breed with a bleeding conscience. See the creed accents responsive, but my sports towards the wattage, and I'm sleeping now. Wow. Yeah, the settlers laugh. You won't be laughing when your covered wagons crash. You won't be laughing when the buses drag your brother's flags to rags. You won't be laughing when your front lords spangled with epitaphs. Won't be laughing. Then I'll hang my boots to rest when I'm impressed. So I triple not on the forgot him. This origami dream is beautiful, but man, those wings will never leave the crown without a feather and a lottery ticket. Now settle down. What it was to pick up on the day, put the pieces back together my way. All I ever wanted was to pick up on the day, put the pieces back together my way. All I ever wanted was to pick up on the day, put the pieces back together my way. All I ever wanted was to pick up on the day, put the pieces back together my way. I'd like to do that.
Um, I enjoyed that. He has got a deep voice, man. That's even deeper than um, DMX, I think. Um, the instrumentation was great. A lot of wind instruments, you know, sounded like trumpets and a flute, maybe a wooden flute. Um, but I like it that, uh, you know, the, the beat took me somewhere. You know, I was complaining a couple of videos ago about, you know, when, when the beat doesn't change from beginning to end, um, that I kind of found it monotonous. But, uh, you know, this one took me places, which was great. Uh, the, the lyrics, uh, I, I know I can tell they mean something to him. And I can tell that if you listen to this enough, you know, you'd get it. But on first lesson, I uh, first listen, I didn't get it. Um, I don't know what he was uh, rapping about, but I could tell he was um, uh, in intelligently um, rapping about, you know, something. I just uh, can't tell you what it is. Um, and, and the chorus I like, the, you know, the don't stop part, um, it, it really broke up uh, his verses nicely. You know, I like I like a, a chorus in between verses as opposed to like, you know, no chorus or one chorus at the end. That's just me, though. But, you know, this song did it, so I liked it. Uh, well, thanks for hanging with me, guys. If you like this kind of content, give me a like and a subscribe. Go ahead, do it right now. I'll wait. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.